It's because of you that I worship and bow down to your name every day. It's because of you that I dance. It's because of you that I shout. It's because of you that I leap for joy with the heart that has no doubt. Sing every time. Every time I lift my hands, it's because of you. church family let's just take a few minutes to greet one another
you make your way back to your seats, let me direct your attention to the screen for the announcements. Mark your calendars for the ladies retreat right here at Porter ABC. That'll be next week, Friday, October the 6th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, October 7th at 10 a.m. The deadline for registration is Wednesday, October 4th. That's next Wednesday. Please register using the link on the homepage of the Church Center app. The cost is only $12, and all ladies ages 12 and up are invited. Next steps. That will begin next Wednesday in room 103. That's over that way. This is a four-week class on basic biblical doctrine. Anyone is welcome to attend, especially if you are new to our church or a new convert. Let's stand to your feet as the ushers make their way forward as we worship in our giving. You can give in three ways. Grab an envelope on the back of the pew and drop it in the offering bag, or you can text to give at the number provided on the screen, or visit our website at Porter APC. Let's pray over this offering. Father, we give to your kingdom, Lord, with a cheerful heart. I pray that you take this money, Lord, and that you bless it to your kingdom, Father. Lord, and you bring it to every need, everywhere. You know every need that we don't, Father. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And if you have a need in your body, we invite you to the front. If you need a miracle or healing, and we'll pray the prayer of faith.
God and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. On your worst day, he's worthy of all of our praise. On the worst day that I have ever had, when everything has gone wrong and nothing has gone the way I wanted, even on that day, he is great and greatly to be praised. He is worthy. Hallelujah. What an honor to be in his presence. What a privilege. What a privilege it is. Do you know, thank you so much, praise team. Thank you so much for leading us into worship. You know, in, in biblical times, if you wanted to go into an atmosphere like this, none of us would have been able to. I don't think, I, I think we pretty much live in Gentile country. Are there any Jews here that I'm not aware of that haven't been grafted in to the family? Are there any of the tribe of Levi? Do you know there were people just like us, as close as they were, they weren't in the right family and they weren't in the right lineage and God had reserved that, the tribe of Levi, to minister in the tabernacle. And you and I, we could get close. We could get close enough to hear the prayers, close enough to hear the songs, close enough to see what was going on from a distance. But there are places we just could not go. That dwelling place of the Most High, you and I were not able. What a privilege it is. That when Calvary took place and when he was crucified, the veil was rent, signifying that it doesn't matter who you are. It don't matter who your daddy was, who your mama was. It don't matter how messed up your family tree is. It doesn't matter what situation you walked in here with. Whosoever will. He said, let him come. The veil is wide open. And if you want to be in my presence, you can come boldly before the throne of grace. You can come with whatever petition you have. And it doesn't matter what you brought with you. It doesn't matter where you came from. You are able to leave all of it behind and to come boldly before the throne. What a privilege. What a privilege it is. Let us never take for granted the amazing opportunity we have when we come into his presence together, worshiping together. If you have your Bibles, I didn't get in. In fact, I didn't get into hardly a single bit of it on Sunday morning. I think I just meddled the whole time. And uh, so I'm going to finish what I didn't even start. But the gist of it, you'll understand. So going again to 1 Kings 18 and verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, it says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. And the title I gave on Sunday morning was simply, He is God. It's a... It's a word or a group of words you'll see continually through scripture over and over where you will see what people where people encounter God and they walk away saying the Lord your God he is God you know what some of us even though we're in church we need a fresh revelation that the God that we serve truly is God he's God over cancer he's God over every situation he's God over depression anxiety he's God over your past God over your future God over your present God over your family God over your children if we'll let him be he will be God over everything Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity to come into this place together, to lift up your name, to magnify you, to get into your word and allow your word to minister to us. I ask that you would speak to each and every one of us tonight, that you would move in every one of our lives. We need you and we cannot make it without you. In your precious name, Jesus, we ask that you would have your way. And everyone said amen. Amen. Tell someone you're glad they're here with the best smile you got. And you may be seated.
Brother Washington, so good to see you. We're praying for Sister Washington. I know Brother Sam Mon has already mentioned some of these prayer requests. Continue to pray for Sister Lopez. We thought we were there was going to be a baby last night, and now tonight. I don't. For those of you that don't know, they have been trying, wanting to have children for eighteen years, and uh, this is a miracle that we are waiting on. And so. He called me. He said, I may leave in the middle of service. You know, just keep her in prayer that mama will be fine. The baby will be fine. That's an incredible thing. And that, that's a, my goodness, I can't imagine what all her must be going through her mind and the worries. But we're going to ask that God is going to bring her peace, that everything is going to be perfect. Amen. And we are believing for that. So continue to pray for her, all the other needs. When you get in the scripture, um, they're not real happy. I didn't get into all of it the other night, but the reason they're so angry is because there's a prophet named Elijah, and he goes and he tells them, he says, hey, it's not going to rain anymore. God is going to shut up the skies. Now, at first thought, you think, why in the world is that such a big deal? Baal worship is rampant everywhere. Again, Sunday morning we talked about the reason idolatry was so so strong is normally... When we produce our own idols, we produce ones that we like to serve. It's easy to worship a God that you make that you like. Remember, in today's world, we don't really have the idols like they did back then. I, I don't think. I don't, I, I'm not sure. Um, I'm hoping that if I go into your homes, there's not all these carved figurines that you're bowing down and worshiping. No, in today's society, we either make gods by our worship and what we give our time to, or we become gods unto ourselves by doing whatever satisfies us. So that's the greatest danger. But in this day and time, the idolatry, the reason Baal was so rampant is the way you worshiped Baal was to give in to perversion and to give in to whatever your flesh wanted imagine that no sacrifice at worship how do I worship him just do what you want and he receives that as worship that's quite a bit that's quite a mega church that it would start very quickly can you imagine if I started a church so what is it going to be it's going to be the dessert church how do we worship you just come and eat we're going to have Reese's Pieces over here, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups over here, which is my favorite. Don't, don't bring me. The last time I said I loved Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, I, I, I think the Hagen family had about four of them bring me Reese's, and, and my willpower was struggling, and I, I didn't want to make y'all feel bad, so I ate all of them, and I didn't want to seem like I wasn't up to it, so I ate them all myself. Well, I'm not asking for more because, you know, I, I don't need to grow in the Lord. Well, I need to grow in the Lord. I just don't need to, you know, grow in the flesh anymore. But it would be an amazing thing. What do you like? Oh, I, I like snickerdoodle, or I like this, or I like that. Or if you want to know what it's like to just add to your life, they got this crumble cookie or whatever. It's not crumbles. It's cookies the size of cakes. It, it, it's incredible. There, there are professional dessert makers here. I'm just telling you. I, I, I've seen it. My goodness. That would be a pretty easy, you know, I think I could worship there. How do you worship Just go up and get you a slice of pie. That's it? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's easy. Well, man, wouldn't that be amazing? It doesn't work like that. No, our God says, hey, deny yourself. Don't don't just do the things that feel natural. You gotta you gotta oppose the flesh. Well, now you got you got God a hall in heaven and earth. He says, This is how you worship me. And Baal said, Oh, no, no, no. The, the prophets of Baal, they said, All you got to do to please Baal is do what you want. Just do what comes naturally. Those things that come into your mind, just go for it. It's all right. It's not, it's not a big deal. And it was so prevalent that they were killing all of the prophets of Israel. They were attacking God's people. And but you have to realize Baal was the God of the weather. He was the God of the thunder. He was the God of the rain. He affected the weather. Now, you have to understand, we may sit here and think, well, that, that's not a big deal. It is if you made all of your money off of crops. It would be a really big deal. In fact, some of the times that they would worship, you know what they would do? You want to know why the enemy, what the enemy wants more than anything else? Your children. The greatest thing that you have to offer God outside of your soul is your child. 
It's the greatest gift outside of the Holy Ghost that he gave you. The Bible says it is an inheritance. And the enemy wants him or her more than anything else. In biblical times, the greatest level of worship they had is they would take their young children or newborn children and they would take them and they would burn them in the fire to offer them to Baal because they said if we give him the most precious thing we possess, then he will give us a great year. We're going to have abundance of rain. We're going to have great seasons and great harvest. And so they would give their own children because he was the God of the weather. And Elijah steps in and says, hey, it ain't going to rain anymore. He wasn't just trying to make it where it was going to be like Texas has been here recently. No, what he was saying is, I want to make it real clear. Your God don't do anything. You have no God. You've got a figment of your imagination that you've made up. I'm telling you, it's not going to rain. You're going to beg him for rain. You're going to plead for rain. You're going to do everything you can. But it's not going to rain because I want you to understand, your God is no God. And so, boy, it leads to frustration and frustration. The king hates him. Jezebel hates him. Everybody, oh, my goodness, it is a problem. And finally, God tells Elijah, he says, I want you to go meet with Ahab. Okay, I'll meet with Ahab. And he goes to the man named Obadiah. Obadiah has been living for God in secret. And Elijah says, Obadiah, I want you to go tell. I I, I believe it's Obadiah. I hate to, you know, misquote the Bible. That's not a good thing. Yeah, Obadiah. Good. Obi. He tells him, he says, listen, I want you to go tell Ahab that I'm here. He said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, listen, I'm flying under the radar. Obadiah has, the prophets are hiding for their life. He's got two different caves that he's got 50 prophets in each of them that he's been giving food and water to hide them from Jezebel who is killing every single prophet. And Obadiah says, listen, they don't even know I'm here. They don't know that I exist. And you're telling me to walk right into the, to the monster's lair and say, hey, I know how to help you find the man that y'all are all after. He says, I know how it is with you. People go to find you and poof, you're gone. He said, I'm going to tell Ahab to come find you. And when we get here, you're going to be gone and you, they're going to kill me. He says, I promise you, when you get here, I'll be here. So Obadiah goes and he tells Ahab, he says, I want you to come. Elijah wants to meet you. And so he brings him. And when he brings him there, the Bible says, when Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? That's just like the enemy. The moment anything falls in our life, we're like, oh, what did God do? They're blaming him. They're saying the condition of the world around us and the condition of our country, the condition of Israel, it's because of what you are doing. They take no, no, you know, I'm not taking any of the, uh, the heat. None of this is my fault. I'm not taking any of the responsibility. Elijah says, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and has followed Balaam or Baal. He says, quit trying to blame everybody else. Look in a mirror and realize the reason your marriage is falling apart is because you refuse to put God first. The reason you're having issues in your family is you won't put God first. The reason you got the anxiety and depression and this and that, a lot of it has to do with things that we will not surrender to God. He said, there are things that we bring into our lives And then we want to ask God, why did you allow this to happen? God's like, I didn't bring that into your home. I didn't bring that into your marriage. I didn't bring that into your mind. I didn't bring that into your heart. I didn't do this. You're upset with me because you do not like the consequences of the decisions that you made. And we want to walk around and be like, God, you know, I prayed and he didn't do it. God's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The law of the harvest still exists. For whatsoever a man sow, he shall also reap. Well, I don't like what, can I tell you, God has been so good to me. God has forgiven me of things I never thought he'd forgive. God has brought me through things I didn't deserve to be brought through. But I still have consequences 
and, and, and seed that was sown years ago and decisions that were made. There, it's, it's Just because there are consequences that still exist from decisions I made, yes, he forgave me. Yes, he brought me through. But I can't sit here on, in the middle of the garden I planted and say, God, how could you do this? Say, oh, no, no, no. The law of the harvest is still the law of the harvest. I, God forgave me of my sin. He has healed me. He has done so much. I still had to have a tooth removed the other day because I ate too much candy. And I did not sit in the dentist chair and be like, God, you have failed me. I thought you were God. I know he's God. I got a sugar problem. I can't blame my lack of discipline on God's goodness. I can't say, well, you allowed this. Hey, come on now. You can't do like that. And then when something good happens, we want to take all the credit. Man, look what I did. Something bad happens. Who did that? What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. Even while you're living in the middle of a garden that you wish you never would have planted, you start putting out new seed. What are you doing? You know what? If I'm in this garden as a result of what I planted back there, then I'm going to keep planting and I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of the other because there's a day coming when I'm going to be in a whole different ice style. It's going to be a whole different garden where I'm going to reap tomorrow the things that I planted for day. And I'm going to get to turn around and tell my kids, you want to know why your life's so good? Because of decisions that were made back there and you don't have to go through the stuff daddy went through you don't have to plant those things in your life you can come on you can skip some of these things he says it's not me causing your problem he said you have angered God You've turned against God. God's been faithful. He's been true. And you've turned on him. And what you are dealing with is a result of idolatry. He says, let's deal with this. He says, listen, gather to me all uh, unto all Israel, unto Mount Carmel. Give me the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. And he sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. So he's sitting here in this scenario. 850 or whatever is what he had invited. You've got all the hundreds of the prophets of Baal that are sitting right here, and he ta- and all of Israel is looking. And Elijah is frustrated the same way that I get frustrated and that you get frustrated. And every minister that has ever stood for truth gets frustrated. And every man that's ever preached out of the word of God is frustrated. And every man that has taken his role as any kind of a spiritual leader serious gets frustrated. And every parent that stands for godly values gets frustrated. It's the frustration that says, hey, when are you going to make up your mind? If the world's been that good to you, give it everything you got, baby. But I don't have a lot of people coming in telling me how good the world is. In fact, I don't have any. I have yet to have one person come in and say, oh, let me tell you. It's rainbows and sunshine out there. It's amazing. It's, 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 it's just like, it's a dream. It's an amazing. No, you know what? They, they come in saying, hey, how do I get off of this pill? How do I get off of this drug? How do I heal my marriage? How do I heal the anxiety? How do I heal the depression? How do I, how do I get my family back together? How do I restore this? This is what I came from. This is what I grew up in. This is what my daddy was like. This is what my mama was like. What do I do with my kids? What do I do with my family? And it's all these things that we wrestle with in this world. And I want to... But then we come into the things of God and we want to put him on a budget. The world gets the best of us and God gets the rest of us. And I want to say, if he's been that good, give him everything you got. Give him every dime you got. Give him your kids. Give him your marriage. Give him your family. Give him your... But if God has been good, then give him the best you have to offer. Give him the best of your time. Give him the best of your decision. Get, when, you, when you go to make a decision, let him be at the middle of it. Let him be at the center of it. The first thing in every decision I got, hey, hold on, how does this affect my walk with God? How does this affect my children's walk with God? How does this affect, how, how does this affect my marriage in terms of uh, uh, pleasing God? Everything I do, if God, and that's what Elijah said, he said, listen, make a decision. It shouldn't be hard. If God be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. He says, let's make it easy. He says, yeah, there's a bunch of y'all. 
He says, let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces. Lay it on wood and put no fire under. See, Elijah was smart. The enemy don't ever try to play by the rules. Come on. You look when, when, look when the serpent tempted Eve. He didn't say, now let's go through all the facts. He said, no, 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 let's not talk about facts. Let's talk about what you want. Let's talk about what makes you feel good. Hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the fruit uh, uh, of the garden. But well, We're not going to talk about what God said. And we're not going to talk about what's right. Let's talk about the limitations on your life. Let's don't talk about every other tree in the garden that you can eat anytime you want. No, let's focus on the one limitation in your life. That's what the enemy does. He doesn't point. He doesn't get you in a corner and say, man, look at everything God's forgiving. Look at everything God brought you through. Look how good God is. Is there anything like the presence of God? Is there anything like his mercy? Is there anything like his grace? No, no, no. He says, oh, I can't believe. You can't go there. You can't go. Oh, bless your heart. You poor creature. He always points. Well, let let me see how I can help you. God hath not said, don't you realize God's keeping some things from you. You can have it all. Eve, you can have all of it. You can have all that, and you can have this one too. It's never enough. And then he threw in a kicker. The reason he don't want you to have that, he knows when you eat of that, you're going to be as gods, knowing good and evil. You're going to be like God. Ooh. Same temptation. Today, same one now. I want to be like God. I want to please myself. I want to do what makes me happy. Eve didn't say, and I looked at that rotten fruit that was worms crawling in and out. Oh, no, 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 no. He don't ever. She said, when she saw that the tree was a tree to be desired, and it was good for food, it had some good stuff in it. It wasn't all bad. Most of the things that lead people away from God, very rarely is it something that's all bad. Come on. Most of them, there's enough good to hide the bad. And the bad just works on you. He says, it was a tree to, to make one what? She took, of the, she took of it and did eat of it. That's how it works. The enemy, I think I, I may even said that Sunday. We grew up saying, the devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a box. My teacher used to get so mad at me because I'd sing and I'd say, my sister is a sly old fox. If I catch her, I'd put her in a box. And then I'd get in trouble. I didn't throw away the key for all those tricks she played on me. If any of you know that song, anyway. And then we do, if the devil's in the road, we will run right over him. Did y'all ever sing that one? It's a little graphic, a little violent, but you know, it's the devil. So, run right over him. If my brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. My sister's in the way, we'll stop and pick him up. Devil's in the road, we run right over him. That's how it was. There, you, It wasn't all violent. But you grow up on that. He's sneaky. Quit thinking you're smart enough. Ooh. The Bible says take heed when you don't think you can fail. Because you've never been closer to failing than when you don't think you can. Well, yeah, but I'm pretty smart. No, 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 no. It ain't, it, it ain't my street smart that'll get me through. The Bible says by man's wisdom, he denied God. By my flesh, I'll oppose the will of God. I got to get in the spirit. And so Elijah said, oh, no, 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 no. I know y'all, y'all cheat. He said, don't put any fire underneath it. He said, you, 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 you're doing this sacrifice, and I know you. There's a good chance one of y'all is going to get a little flame and put it under and then act like it's a miracle. He said, ah, no cheating. If your God really is who he says he is, you ain't going to have to help him out. But the fact is, Elijah knew enough about him to say, you ain't got enough faith in your God to not try to put a little fire underneath it anyway. If your God's all that, let him go toe-to-toe with my God. 
He says, come on, let's, he said, don't put a fire underneath it. He said, you put down, he said, I'll dress the other bullet. I'll lay it on the wood and I'll put no, no fire. You call on the name of your God and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. He said, you go ahead. You go ahead and do yours for your many and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under they said, oh, well, this is an easy thing. This is what our God does. This is actually, this is on his, uh, this, this is on the door of his office. This is on his resume. He's the God of the weather. You're asking our God to do what his job is. He said, yeah, I'm not asking him to do something he's not familiar with. You say he's the God of the weather. I'm just asking him to do what he's supposed to be able to do every day. He says, and the God that answers by fire, you call on yours and I'll call on mine and let's see what happens. And the God that answers by fire, they said, oh, pfft. this is what our God does. Our God's the God of the weather. He can make the, st- the thunder, the lightning, the fire. He can- yeah, let's do that. We'll agree to that. He says, go ahead, go for it. It says they took it, they dressed it, and they called on the name of the bell of Baal from morning and even until noon. Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. Let me tell you, they had more worship even than many of us do. They were leaping on the altar. Baal, hear us. Answer by fire. Come on, man. That, come on, our God's on the line. We got to do this. And he, he goes further. And Elijah, and you have to understand, he, 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 he's not just normal. He, he goes and he tells them, it says, Elijah mocked them. Well, can you imagine if you brought a guest to church and they believed in other gods? And I was like, ha, you ain't got no God. <laughs> Make him do a trick. He, ah, you, you're joking. It, Y'all be like, oh, my goodness, I am not bringing him. You should come to Friends Day. He's a lot nicer on Friend Day. Elijah, though, is sick of it. He is mocking it. He's saying, this is what you pulled your children away for. Come on, call on him. Maybe you got to get louder. This is why you brought your family over there. This is why you walked away from God. Come on. Come on, you bad. You're smart. You know it all. This is the bad God. This is the one that's going. Come on. Where is he? Maybe he's asleep. Oh, maybe he's on vacation. Maybe his train hadn't come in yet. Maybe he missed his flight. I mean, he is dogging them. But he's angry because he's looking at a bunch of people acting foolish over an imaginary God, but that imaginary God, because of it, they've killed prophets, they've killed babies, they've killed families, they have angered God, they have messed up an entire country, and he is so frustrated over people's worship to an idol. And he is not making it easy on them. He is not being understanding. Now, in today's culture, we'd be like, no, Brother McCoy, we need to be very understanding. I understand. You know what? Maybe he's in a meeting. It could happen. Elijah is not being polite. Elijah is the bully on the playground. He says, listen, you, you got to cry louder for he's a God. Maybe he's talking. You know what? Maybe he's pursuing. He's off. You know what? He's on a journey. Oh, you know what? Maybe he's asleep and you, you need to be awake. You, you got to wake him up. He can't hear you. And they cried aloud. And then they get desperate. It says, and they cut themselves with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past. They prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice and there was no voice and there was no answer nor any that regarded and I want to tell people I want to tell people so badly, listen, when you stand before God, call on everything that this world has have to offer. See if you can call your boss when it comes time to step into eternity. Tell them, tell them how much time I gave. Tell them about all my long hours. There ain't going to be nobody to stand in that. My hobbies, come on. Tell them how good I was at that. Tell them how good I was at that. Tell them how smart I was. Hey, tell them about the house. I, I want my H.O. Yeah, HOA, whatever, homeowners. I want the person that knows where I'm living. Hey, come tell God how big my house was. I I want him to know what I was. It don't matter. None of those things that we give a majority of our life to are going to step in and make a difference where I spend eternity. 
But let me tell you something. Every tear you've ever cried in prayer, the bottle said, Bible says they are bottled up in heaven. Every Bible study you ever taught, every soul you ever won, every time you found a place of prayer, every time you showed up when you didn't feel like showing up, every time you lived it when you didn't feel it, when it wasn't easy, let me tell you. He said, I've seen it all. Everything you've done, anything you've done, I've remembered it. I've seen your sacrifice. I've seen what you've done. I won't forget it. And let me tell you, when you stand before God, joy is going to flood your soul and you're going to be like thank God I never gave up I never let down it, it wasn't easy sometimes it felt like I was doing it all on my own but I showed up when it was all on my own thank God I made it thank God I never quit thank God I never let down oh thank God I never got a hold of this world and I quit reaching for him I promise you you're going to be so thankful They, they screamed until they didn't have a voice left. They come off of that altar bleeding, tired, weary. For hours they've been worshiping. They've been pleading. And they feel the humiliation that many are going to feel on that last day when they stand before judgment. The realization, everything I gave my life to, and it meant Nothing. Nothing. Oh, why did I waste my time? They're frustrated. But in the back of their mind, they're thinking, hold on, it ain't over. Because if his God doesn't answer, then it's a draw. I know our God didn't do what we thought he would do, but if his God doesn't, then it's a tie. In soccer, I don't know how that works. I think that's, I mean, you can even win, I think, on a draw. I'm not really sure how it works. Our school one day, we were sitting there, and they were like, hey, for, for break time, we're gonna, they're going to teach us to play soccer. And so they did. It took one day of me running up and down. And I was like, Lord, this is not my talent. I'm a dessert taster. This is not my skill set. I could tell right then that was not what God was calling me to do. My wife came in yesterday and said, you want to go run? Your car break down? <laughs> you out of gas? We, you need me to drive you somewhere? No. Come on. We, we can get our steps in. The Bible says all the fat belongs to the Lord. I don't want to lose anything that's his. <laughs> I may have been stressing that just a little bit. There's still plenty there. So then Elijah steps in. It says, and Elijah says unto the people, come near unto me. And the people came. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. The first thing you got to do when you decide to get back to where you're supposed to be is wherever your prayer life fell apart, go back and put it back together. Because let me tell you one thing, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you call me a prophet, whatever you want, but I can prophesy right now. Nobody's making it without prayer. There's no such thing as a saint that doesn't have a prayer life. There's no such thing as a godly man that doesn't pray. There's no such thing as a godly young lady that doesn't pray. There's no such thing as a godly marriage where they don't pray. There's no such thing as a godly home that is not filled with prayer. There's no such thing as a godly church with empty prayer rooms. Prayer makes the difference, and you can't have the things of God without a relationship with God. And it don't matter if you've got 18 Bibles stacked in your bookshelf it doesn't matter unless you take one down and you get to study it can you imagine you show up and be like oh i need surgery i'm like i own 14 books on heart surgery and i got a good buck knife let me give it a go i'm not worried about what books you have on your shelf i want to know what you know I'm not worried about people that got bag that have got Bibles stacked six feet tall. I'm worried. You know what the enemy's worried about? The enemy, enemy's not worried about them either. What he's worried about one is that that's marked up and it's worn and it looks like it's falling apart. I've got a paper written in my Bible that says that a Bible falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Oh, the enemy doesn't walk into our homes terrified because we got some kind of saying on prayer that's, you know, nailed to the wall. Uh-uh. What he's worried about is somebody whose home is a place of prayer, and they constantly go to prayer. I'm it's what makes the difference. 
And so Elijah tells him, he says, come on. I want you to all to come together. He, let me, he repairs the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He takes 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. And there he builds the altar. And then when he's done, he digs a trench around the altar. And he puts the wood, he cuts the bull up, he puts it in pieces, he lays it on the wood. And then he does something else. He says, fill four barrels with water. Oh, oh, not, not easy. <laughs> now, now, look, it, we didn't get a fire out of our God, and, it was, and the wood was dry. What are you doing? He said, yeah, but you... You believe your God's the God of the weather. My God's the God of everything. He said, and I want you to know it don't matter what kind of condition the wood's in. When my God answers, he doesn't study the situation to see if the wood's dry and if it's too hard for it. When my God answers, it doesn't matter what it looks like. He doesn't care if the wood is wet. It doesn't matter if it's messed up. When my God answers, he doesn't need a trick. He said, give me those barrels of water. He said, fill the trench up around it. And then they do it, and then he does it again. He says, now do it a second time, and they did it a second time. Do it a third time, and they did it a third time. Three times, that's 12 barrels of oil they poured on the sacrifice. There was so much water to the water, it was all on the altar, and it ran into the trench, and the trench was filled with water. And they're looking there saying, this ain't going to happen. Elijah says, no, no, I want you to understand. When my God answers, there is no limit. There's some people in here tonight you need to walk out knowing when God steps on the scene, it doesn't matter what he stepped into. I don't care what your family situation is. I don't care what their addiction is. I don't care what the doctor said, what the name of the disease is. I don't care how long you've been addicted, how long the enemy's messed with your mind, all the list of things that have gone. When my God steps on the scene, he steps on as the deliverer, the conqueror, the doctor, the healer, the great physician, the great I am, the bright and morning star, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. There is no one like him, none before him, none behind him. You've never seen anybody like my God. You've never, ever seen anything like my God. And when he moves, everything moves. See, see, enemy's got some of musicians, you can get ready. Enemy's got some of us thinking that our God's got to have everything right and we got to doctor it up just right. Let me tell you something. I told I don't want to embarrass him. In fact, Brandon will tell you this. Well, I don't want to embarrass him. I don't know. It'd probably embarrass him if I told his story. You don't think it would? Well, tell him he don't like it. He can hurt me and get here and tell me not to say it. Sister Tracy's brother. Boy, she, he, he, he was just, he was going through some things, dealing with some things. I don't remember what time it was. It was either 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. He's, he's working in another place right now. I'm looking forward to seeing him soon. I get a call. Can you, can you go? I got, got to talk to Brother Brandon. Brandon's out there. I come up. I, I don't really know him. I'm like, hey, what is it? He's like, Pastor, preacher, you got to do something. His eyes are bloodshot. I mean, they're blood red. I could tell he's, he's a little out of it. And he's like, you don't understand. You got to do something. You got to baptize me. I don't want to feel this way anymore. I, can't. I said, no, 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 man, listen. I said, you, you, you need to be in your right mind for this. You need to be. He, he was fighting so many things. The enemy hated him because the enemy knows what God's called him to do. And enemy hates everything about what God wants to do in your life and he came up here and I, I kid you not it wasn't a thousand it was over I think it was two thousand whatever it was he said I'm telling you you got to I said I can't baptize you right now this is too important to just do on a whim I need you to I want you to fully realize it he said I'll pay you to baptize me now if we were the type of preachers that the world seems to think you'd be like well absolutely let's let's get you a dip real quick bloop bloop Building fund check. Your salvation is more than anything in this world. In fact, it's too valuable for me to make you feel good about anything less than total commitment to God. I am never going, hey, I love you, but I'm not going to agree with you while you put God on a back burner. I love you too much to go along in that direction. I said, listen, I can't do it. He said, I'm not leaving here. He got a little belligerent. He said, I'm not leaving here until you baptize me. I said, okay, you stay. I left. Of 
course, I only lived right over there. It's 2 o'clock, I think, in the morning. Looked out my window. His truck was still sitting outside. I said, huh. I kind of walked over here, and I could pick in there, and I could hear him praying up here all by himself. I said, I'm going to see. I left again. 3 o'clock, I came back. I could still hear him praying up here. I said, man, <laughs> he ain't playing. I went up there. I told him, I said, Brandy. Boy, he looked at me, tears, his eyes still bloodshot red, trying to just desperate. I said, I'm going to baptize you. He said, you grab me. You serious? I said, I am. I'm going to baptize. He said, thank you. Boy, he went back out here. He walked down these steps right here, and I'm going to tell you, it was the most amazing thing. I've told people all over this country about it. I told him, I said, let me tell you something, Brandon. I said, well, there's something. It doesn't look like it, but there is a surgery that takes place under this water. All the things that you've carried with you, all the things in your mind, all the things in your heart, everything the devil's tried to put on you. I said, while wow, you're under the Bible says we are baptized with him into the body, into Christ. I said, and we are a new creature. When you come out of that water, you're not coming up with any. You may remember him, but God says he's cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. They're, they're, they're gone from him, even from his remembrance. I said, when you come out of there, while you're under there, even if it's just a split second, God does a surgery in your heart, mind, and soul and takes all of that out of you. I'm telling you, he went down and I baptized him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of all of his sin. And I'm telling you, it took me, when he came out, there wasn't anything bloodshot. His eyes were crystal clear. It was an entire, I'm telling you, in a moment, it didn't matter how long he dealt with issues. It didn't matter what battles he had been through. My God, ain't like anybody else. It just takes a moment. It just takes a moment. He said, oh, here, you can stand with me. Oh. He said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. And the fire fell and it consumed the burnt sacrifice. It consumed the wood. It consumed the stones. It even licked up the dust. It took the water that was in the trench and all the people saw it and they said, the Lord, he is the God. He is God. He said, I won't just take the sacrifice. I'll take the stones. I'll take the dust. I'll take everything there is because I'm that kind of God. I don't just take it a little bit. I'll take all of it. I'll transform it. When I'm done, nothing will be the same. You but you have to understand, you don't know what I'm going through. Uh-uh. Let me tell you, all you need to get through your mind, it may not be what I want it to be, but it ain't because he's lost one ounce of power or because he can't do it. Why do you keep praying? I can't do anything else. Peter came at once. When he found out who Jesus was, he realized that this is God in flesh when I've seen Jesus I have seen God and he turned around and Jesus asked him when the crowd left he turned around to the disciples he said will you also leave me and Peter's words ring in my ear Peter said where shall we go you have the keys to eternal life. Where do I go from here once I see who you are? What other choices? Pastor, what are we going to do? Well, what, you know, if we change it, I can't change. Where do I go from here when you know who he is? There is no other option. I can't. Money's not enough. Fame's not enough. The house is big, isn't big enough. The cars are Nothing else is enough to pull me away. Why? Where do I go from him? If you're struggling in the decisions, it's because you haven't gotten to that place where you've seen him for yourself. 
you got to have a Moses experience where you see him face to face. you got to have a place where you get into his presence, that thick presence where it changes you so much that you walk out and you're not trying to decide who you're going to give your life to anymore. No, it's a set decision. I've seen God. I have felt his presence. There is no other choice for me. I can't quit living this way. Well, what, 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 what if the government does this? I can't do anything else. He's too great and he's been too faithful. He is too real. He, on my worst day, if I, if I get a disease and God doesn't heal me, what are you going to do? What do you mean what am I going to do? It's God. I'll stay faithful. My situation is not what decides how big he is. It is what it is. God, he is perfect in all of his ways. I don't understand all of them, but he's perfect in all of them. I'm going to tell you what you need to realize. Some of you walking in here, I don't know if God will do that. My God can do anything. He can heal anybody. He can do all of it. Yeah, but it's not happening. Yeah, but if you know he can and he hasn't, then it's a lot easier to say, okay. If you're not worried, I'm not worried. You know the way that I take. You know everything in my life. And if you have allowed this to stay in my life, then number one, I'm going to go to you and ask that you would take it. If you're not going to take it, then I'm going to go and say, God, if you're allowing this to stay in my life for a reason, then would you help me? Would you help me do whatever it is you're calling me to do? But God, whatever it is, I got to get to where Job says, hey, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your God is God. And he's big enough for anything you walked in here with. And he's big enough for whatever you're going through. And he's big enough for what you're going through in your marriage. And he's big enough to heal whatever's going on in your body. And he's big enough to preserve your family. And he's big enough to protect your children. My God is able. You just got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. And when you go and when you begin to give everything to God, you give it to him knowing There is nothing that you cannot do. What did you bring in this morning or this evening? What did you bring into this place that you're still holding on to? Why don't you bring it? Why don't you let him have it? He's big enough. He can handle it. Let me tell you what he won't do. My God does not assault people. Come here, Brother Nathaniel. Some of us, we live, well, if God wants me to do it, he'll do it. And this is the kind of God we say we want. Oh, I'm going to use you, and I want you to get closer to me. Oh, I'm so glad you're making it, and you've made it to an altar. That's it. Get down. Get down there. Get that. Thank God that you're faithful. But that's not my God. Come here, brother. Thank you. My God says, I can do all things. Whosoever will, let him come. I won't make you. There's a thousand things out there. It wasn't just bail. It was Baal, and it was Ashtoreth, and it was this. It was the arenas. It was the gladiators. It was this, and it was that. And there's a host of things that will pull for you. He said, if you want me, seek me, and you'll find me. I won't force you. I won't kick you. I won't beat you. I won't manipulate you. I'm not going to blackmail you. I'm not going to hold what you did over your head. You decide. I let Adam and Eve decide. I'll let you decide. If you want me, whosoever will, let him come. I won't force you. I won't twist your arm. I won't, I'm not going to break everything in you. I'm not going to use your children as a bartering tool. I'm not going to wreck your life and burn your house and get. No. He said, if you want me, It's got to be your decision. I gave you free will to reveal whether you want me or not. I will not make you, 
Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go therein. He said, but there's another path, straight and narrow. Few there be that find it. Why? Because there's not many people that will walk away from everything the world has to offer to say, I want you. I choose you. As for me and my house, God, you get the best of me. Come on, that's it. Come on, all over this place, in the pews, in the front. You don't have to be perfect to come to him. You don't have to have all your ducks in a row and have it all together. No, he's just looking for a right spirit. He's looking for a sincere heart that says, God, I don't have it all together, but I want you more than anything. I've made some mistakes and I've got some failures, but I'm tired of living in the in, in the valley of indecision. I'm tired of living in the middle. God, you've been better to me than anybody in this world. You have been faithful. You have been good. And if I'm going to give the best of my life to anybody... I'm going to give it to you. Here I am. Here I am. I choose you, God. I choose you. I choose you over the job. I choose you over the money. I choose you over everything that the world has to offer. I choose you. I choose you.